Hey everyone, so in the last video I showed you how to embed a Canvas app inside of a model-driven framework. Uh, in this video I'm going to show you how to leverage now the um, form context that is passed to your Canvas app, uh, which they call the model-driven form integration, and um, how powerful that is um, in the context of uh, Power Apps. So, uh, what I did is I went ahead and for these accounts um, that we have in our collection here, uh, I added some account numbers, just some dummy account numbers so that we can leverage those for filtering. So right now our items property for our gallery is literally just a collection of accounts. There's no filtering or anything like that. What I'm going to do is for our fields, let's just go ahead and add for subtitle three. Let's just add the account number field just so we can look at it. And let's save that. Okay, so you can see that I added some pseudo account numbers for all these accounts. Okay, great. Ugly app, but this is not the point. All right. We'll make some beautiful apps together in the next couple of days. So now what we're going to do is we're going to filter our items property. And we're going to filter this account source based on the account number attribute. So we just look through these and here's the account number attribute. So that in our logical test is the account number is equal to, and then this is where it becomes tremendously powerful. Model driven form integration dot item dot. And now I have access to every single attribute on the form that this Canvas app is integrated on, meaning the form that we put this Canvas app on earlier in the last video on um, Model Driven Forms Lesson 2. So with that being said, what I'm all I'm going to do here, you're probably guessing, is pass an account number. And then I'm going to close this out, and I'm done. Now, this table has nothing to show me here because it has no, no conception of which form I'm on, right? So I'm going to save this. I'm going to publish this. And so what is our expectation really? Well, our expectation is that when we go to any one of those five accounts, it's going to literally only filter down to the exact account that we're looking at. Now, if you had a situation where that account has like the canvas app that you're surfacing has a ton of information about that account that's coming from other places, you can imagine how valuable this can be for your customers. So um, let's take a look. First thing I always do is I hit F12 and I clear my cache. Um, it's different for every browser, but that's what I do. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and open up a couple accounts and we'll just take a look and see if that canvas app is rendering the way we want it to based on the account number. The idea is really the account number is just a pipeline to, to show that the data is based on just that one account now, not the five. And sometimes it takes a couple. Yeah, see, so it's still not even showing the account number parameter yet. So let's clear cache again. And this is just one of those things that us power platform developers and architects face all the time, which is we have to just constantly clear cache when we're doing any kind of client side stuff. Um, let's see if maybe now it'll do it for us. <clears throat> if not, it probably will on the next run. And there you have it. So a datum corporation, ABC 0001. Okay, great. Now let's see, does it work? Is it scalable? If I had 500,000 accounts, would it work? Yeah, it would. It totally would. And that's how it's done. Uh, all right. So looking forward to uh, the next couple videos. And um, thank you so much for watching.